Hello, my yarny friends. I'm Sarah Satch, and welcome or welcome back to my crochet channel. Now, today is Friday Fun Day, and so I thought it would be so much fun to stitch up our little clover stuffy. It's a clover named Clover. <laughs> and Clover is a four leaf clover, stuffy and soft and oh so squishy. <laughs> It's stitched up using the Premier Parfait Chunky Pom Pom yarn. And it's called Pom Pom because see all those colors in there? Isn't that cute? We'll talk more about yarn in just a minute. This is just a super fun little St. Patrick's Day or any day clover. And did you know that a shamrock and a clover are not the same thing? A four-leaf clover is not a shamrock. But a shamrock is a three-leaf clover. <laughs> just a little FYI for those of you who don't know. I learned this just a few years ago. Actually, I didn't know myself. Well, anyway, this is super fun to make. It measures about eight by eight inches. It's four leaves with our little tail. You can even add a string if you want to to hang it up for decorations or give it to your kids or make it for yourself. I'm probably going to have two of these, so I'm going to give one to each of my granddaughters if they want them. They'll probably leave them here so that we can throw them at each other. <laughs> That's what they usually do with our stuffed animals. But anyway, this is super fun, the perfect Friday fun day project, and it's so easy. We make a front and a back, we put them together and add the little tail, super easy. And it's stuffed and soft. Now you can find the complete pattern with pictures, as always, down in the notes underneath this video. All right, so let's talk yarn. Now the yarn that we used for our clover and also our little bow is this, Premier Parfait Chunky Pom Poms. It comes in 10 different beautiful colors. And I love it because it has this thread going through it that has pom-poms on it. And so you've got your fuzzy velvet yarn with that pom-pom going through it. And it's super fun. It's like confetti. So you're gonna need approximately two ounces from this pom-pom or whatever color you want to make your clover. And then you're gonna need just a teeny tiny bit of the orange or whatever color that you want for the bow. You can even make the bow in, an, in a regular acrylic like this. Now you'll notice that I have a little bit of green here and that's so once we make it and put it together, we're going to use that, let me show you, let me open this up a little bit, to bring in those four edges to make it look more like a poofy clover, okay? And that's why you need a matching color that's similar so that it doesn't stick out and show up. Now you'll need a small amount of pink for the mouth or whatever color you want your mouth. You could put a bright red one on there and it would be super cute. Now let's talk safety eyes. These are just your basic safety eyes that I got at Hobby Lobby. I got them in a big pack. I don't have the size of them because I don't have the package anymore, but they're just little round black safety eyes. And I'm gonna show you how to put them in going through a stitch so they stay put. But, as a safety precaution, if you're going to give this to a small child or even have it around a dog that's going to chew on that, use something else. Because these can, if you pull on them hard enough, can be pulled out. Okay, We're, I'm going to show you how to put it into the stitch itself to make it more secure. But if a baby's going to chew on that, they might pull them out and choke on it. So be sure and use your... your um, common sense on that for who you're going to give this to or who's going to be playing with it. If your dogs are chewers and they might get a hold of this, they can choke on these as well. And if you're not going to do that, you can use French knots or you can crochet some little circles. It's kind of up to you what you want to do for your eyes. All right. So a small amount of pink or some color for the mouth. Same thing if you want to add a bow. Okay. We're going to be stitching today with our J hook, which is a six millimeter crochet hook, because this is a bulky number six yarn. If you don't have the parfait or you don't want to purchase some, you certainly can. I'll put that link for the, for the Premier Affiliate link 
down in the notes underneath this video. And I really encourage you to, to click on that link and go look at all the beautiful colors. They have pink, they have yellow, they have a white that I'm going to be doing some Easter things with. Um, yellow, there's a teal color that's super pretty. And they're just so pretty with all those pom-poms in it, okay? <clears throat> You're gonna need some stuffing and it's kind of up to you how much, but you'll notice I just have a couple of handfuls here basic polyester fiber fill and then you need a needle for sewing on your mouth and for weaving in ends and a pair of scissors so we're going to begin of course with our green and you're going to need to make two exactly alike a front and a back all right so we're going to begin with our slip knot we're going to chain five one two three four five we're going to join this into a circle and then make that stay knot. Now you can do the uh, magic ring or magic circle if you want to. I really don't like doing it when I'm using a thicker yarn. I just, I don't, it's just too complicated as far as keeping it closed. It's just my opinion. You can use whatever way to make your circle that works best for you. All right, so we'll put our hook in, pull up a loop and we're going to chain three. This chain three will count as our first double crochet. Whoops, Just trying to get some yarn out here. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to stitch 11 more double crochets in this chain five loop. You'll also notice that I'm stitching over my tail of yarn, and that's so we can close up that hole in the middle just by pulling on that string gently. We don't want a hole in the middle of our clover. <laughs> All right, I wasn't counting, let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. All right, so we have 12 double crochets. We're going to join to our chain three with a slip stitch, and we'll go ahead and chain three. I'm gonna pull that loop a little bit big just so it doesn't come out, and we're gonna turn it over. We're gonna gently pull on that string. And when you're working with velvet yarns, you're gonna, when you're doing things like this, don't pull too hard because I broke a string when I was working on the other one and I had to add it in. <clears throat> we don't want to pull the strings too tightly. We wanna close up the hole, but we don't wanna to pull too tightly and break that string. And you can also leave a longer tail if you're uncomfortable with the shorter tail. I'm running out of tail anyway, so. Let me put that back on there. There we go. All right, I'm not gonna worry about cutting that off because that's gonna be on the inside of my project. But you can cut it off if you want to. All right, so row one, we have 12 double crochets. Join to our chain three and chain three. Let's do row two. So, our chain three counts is our first double crochet, so we're gonna double crochet and the same stitch as our chain three. And now in each of those 12 stitches, there we go, we're going to stitch two double crochets. All right, two double crochets in each of those stitches around and then we'll join back to our chain three. Join back to our chain three. I have stitched two double crochets in each of my 12 around, so I have 24 double crochets. We're going to join to that chain three with a slip stitch and chain three. 
Now we're going to double crochet in the same stitch as our chain three and then only one double crochet in the next. We'll stitch two double crochets in the next. And one double crochet in the next. So we're alternating two and one, two and one. Two double crochets in the next. one double crochet in the next, alternating two and one all the way around. And then join back to our chain three. I have completed row three. On row three, we alternated two and one, two and one, double crochets all the way around, so we have 36 double crochets. We're going to join to our chain three with a slip stitch and just chain one. On row four, we're going to form those four little bumps that make it look like a clover. All right, so we're going to single crochet in the next two double crochets. So one, two. Now we're going to double crochet in the next two. One, and two. Now in the next double crochet, we're going to stitch three double crochets in the same stitch. One, two, and three. Now we'll double crochet in the next two. One, two, and then we'll single crochet in the next two. One and two. All right, so now we've formed our first bump for our clover. And now we're gonna repeat that three more times. So single crochet in the next two double crochet in the next two, one and two. Then in the next one, we're going to stitch three double crochets. One, two, three, all right? So we stitch three double crochets in the same double crochet. Now we'll stitch one double crochet in the next two. There's one and two, and then one single crochet in the next two. So now you can see we have one and two, and we'll repeat this two more times for four bumps for our clover. I have completed those last two sides I joined to my first single crochet with a single crochet, and I left this one attached. You're going to need two. Make one and weave in the end of the first one, and then make a second one because you need a front and a back. All right? So now what we're going to do is before we put them together, we're going to add our safety eyes. All right? And so we're going to put our safety eyes in this one. Now we're going to add our safety eyes now so that once we stitch it together, we can stuff it and we won't have to cram our hand up inside there, okay? So this is the top and we wanna move it so that it's on the bottom, okay? We're going to add our safety eyes to row two and the way we're gonna do that <clears throat> is we're going to put them here and here but what we're going to do is we're going to go in that stitch. So there's like little loops in there. Put your safety eye through those loops of the stitch. Don't go in the hole between or it'll slide through. All right. And you can see on the back, I've gone through an actual stitch through those loops. And then you just take the back and snip. 
push it on until it snaps. All right. And then we'll do the same thing on this side. Going through the stitch on row two. And if you want your eyes farther apart, you can put them farther apart if you want to. Oh, that was my knuckle. Ugh, there we go. <laughs> that one didn't want to go on. All right, so now we have our eyes on. This will keep us from having to do this later. All right, so we're going to take our two pieces and we're going to put them together right sides facing out. All right, we're gonna turn it this way and we're going to single crochet all the way around. We'll leave a hole, we'll stuff it, then we'll close it and add the stem. All right, so we're gonna line everything up. We'll go through the first stitch here and the first stitch here and stitch single crochets all the way around. And remember, leave an opening for stuffing on this side. And that's why I wanted you to do those safety eyes now because if we waited till we stitched it partially together, first of all, we wanna do it before we stuff it but also the opening is so small because this is a small animal. It's not really an animal, a small stuffy. <laughs> and so we wanna make sure we have enough room to get our hand up in there. And with this being such a small item, we wouldn't be able to do that. And so that's why it was really important to put those safety eyes on now. If you're going to use embroidered eyes or say French knots, or even sew on some little circles, you can do that when you're all done if you want to, or you could do it now. It's totally up to you. All right, so I'm just single crocheting the front and the back together. And I'm gonna do that till about right here, and then I'm going to stuff it and close that. All righty, so I'll just keep working around my clover. So I've stitched almost all the way around. I left an opening and I'm going to stuff it. And you can see by when we're stuffing this, how it would have been really hard to get those safety eyes in there at this time. But if you forgot, you can go ahead and add them now too, <laughs> before we close it. What I'm doing is I'm forming four balls, one for each of the corners. And this one's gonna go right here and you can see it's pretty squishy, and I love that. All right, so we stuffed it, and now I'm gonna finish working around it, and then we're going to shape it. And you're looking at it, and you're thinking, um, that doesn't look much like a clover. Well, it doesn't, not at this point. Those extra little strings that we're going to add, or yarn that we're gonna add, to bring it in is going to help it look more like a clover because I wanted it to be a poochy, chubby clover, not just a flat clover. Alrighty, so I'm all the way to the, back to where I started, so I'm going to go ahead and slip stitch, cut my yarn. I'm going to go ahead and pull that loop to the back side. <laughs> and now I'm just going to weave this in, going through some of those stitches, and then go through some of that stuffing, and just pull that through, and now it's on the inside. So now it just looks like a square, right? I mean, you can see the poochiness of the four corners, but it doesn't really look like a clover, does it? And that's what we're going to do next. We're going to make it look like a clover. So I've got some medium weight number four acrylic yarn that is similar. You want to try to match it up. I didn't have it this light so I went with a little darker and we're going to pull those sides in. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in the center in the back and we're going to come up in the center in the front. Alright now this piece of yarn is about 18 inches long. 
and we're going to leave a little bit of a strand in the back so that we can tie that securely. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go around and go back through. And you want to make sure you don't pull that string through. So we'll hold that string. We want to give it a nice good tug and then we'll come around the top. And we'll do that again. We'll give it a nice good tug and so that pulled in the bottom and the top. Now we need to do the sides. And again, I'm holding this one tightly and we're going to go around the side and again come up, give it a nice good tug and then around this side. All right, we're going to come right up the middle. There we go. I want to make sure everything's tugged in. Everything looks good. We also want our yarn hidden. We don't want it seen. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go around one of those. See how I'm going in? And then I'm going to go right back to the back. And that's just going to hold that securely because you're going around a, a stitch. And then back here we're going to just tie a knot. One, two, and then that knot that I like to do. And you want to make sure that's nice and secure. If you're not sure that knot's going to hold, you can always put a dot of fray check on there or a dot of hot glue because this is a toy and it's okay if you, because this isn't crochet, crochet portion. And if you're worried about that knot coming undone, you can put that on there just to secure it. But see, now you can see that it looks like the other clover. Except this one's eyes kind of down. There we go. <laughs> All right, now it needs some details. All right, so now we're going to make the tail. And it's super easy. You're going to go down here. Whoops. Try that again. Bring in your yarn. Leave yourself a tail there of yarn so it doesn't come through. Chain six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then you're just going to turn single crochet in the second and just single crochet in those chains moving back up. If you want a longer stem, you can certainly make one. But I just didn't want it to be too long. Okay, so now we've done that. We're going to go right back in that same spot and make a slip stitch. And cut our yarn. There we go. And you'll notice that it has just a natural curl. It'll go to the side because we stitched in those chains. And then on the back here, we're just going to make just a quick gentle knot. We don't want to pull too tightly, but we do want it to be secure. All right. And then I'm just going to take my hook and go in, grab those strings, and pull them to the inside of my clover. Oops, don't want to pull that stuffing out. <laughs> okay, let's grab that other one. That one was a little bit longer. There we go. Make sure it's all stuck in there. So now we have a stem on our clover. So I chose to do just a simple little V mouth and it's really an easy thing to do. Just go in the center here, make sure you go up and come up through a stitch so you don't lose it. We'll leave that tail hanging there and we'll just go in that same spot and go this way. And then we'll just go over it that way it's doubled and it's a little thicker. And it's a really easy little mouth to add. But there are lots of different kinds of mouths you can add if you want to. I just like doing this. All right, so now I'm just going to go to the back with that. And 
All right. And then I'm going to grab this tail and pull that to the back. Make sure I get it close to where that one is. There we go. So there's the mouth. And then we'll do the same thing. We'll just tie a little knot back here and stick it inside the back of our clover. All right, so we'll just clip that, grab my crochet hook. There we go, and just grab those strings and pull them inside. And I wanted it to be really bright and colorful since all the pom-poms are really bright and colorful. So the bow is optional. I put it up here, and I thought it was cute to do it in orange. You could also put it down here, which I'm going to do this time just so you can see the difference. So I cut a piece of yarn out about 10 inches long, and we're just gonna take this and wrap it around our fingers a couple of times, like this. And then we'll just take those loops and lay it on there it's similar to how we do a pom-pom, only we're not going to cut it. And we want the loops to be long enough to look like a bow. All right, so I'm gonna give it another knot. Make sure it's gonna stay put. All right, and then I kind of look at it and adjust it. Like this string's a little long, so I'm gonna go ahead and There we go. All right, so now I have a cute little orange tie and lots of fluff everywhere. And I thought I would put it down here on this one. So I'm just gonna take my needle and thread one side. That pom-pom thread came unwound. Let me wind that back up so I can get that on there. There we go. Yeah, it's just a thread that has pom-poms on it that goes through the whole yarn. It's really pretty. All right, so I'm gonna come down here and you do the one on the top the same. You're gonna go across, pull that one out. Then we'll take this one. And these are the two ends we tied with. All right, and so let me show you under here. That one went that way. So I'm gonna go in this one and go this way. So you're crossing back and forth underneath. Sort of lift that up. Then tie it underneath. There we go. And then you just clip them. Let me clip this one. That one's kind of long. There we go. And now you've got strings on the wrong side there there we go a nice little bow tie down on the bottom of your clover so there's our clover stuffies super fun super squishy and remember the bow is optional you don't even have to add it they're just super fun <laughs> so cute